I, I work for Gravicus. Uh, we're, um, I'm, I'm doing actually work in, in PureScript. Uh, it's a PureScript is a, a purely functional language compiled to JavaScript, very similar to Haskell, inspired by Haskell. Co the compiler is written in Haskell. And uh, I'll, I'll have today a short introduction to PureScript type system and then some nice stuff about commonads that I think might be really interesting. Um, so, yeah, the first part is, is about the, the TypeScript. So, uh, PureScript is a strongly uh, typed functional programming language. Uh, we have type inference, really similar syntax and type system that uh, Haskell has. Uh, there, some things were really polished comparing to Haskell because it's a really new language. It's like three, three years old. Uh, we have nice uh, syntax for records, very similar to the one that is in, in, in JavaScript. Uh, we have row polymorphism, we have new types, type aliases, polymorphic types, higher candidate types, ranked n types, multi-parameter type classes and constraint types, functional dependencies and, and kind system with, with its inf inference. I will go shortly through, through the list and say what it, mean, what it really means. So, uh, first there are records, something that is really very common in, in front-end development, that you have some kind of data structures uh, that are products of various types. So in, uh, in PureScript, we have, we have a uh, da da data type record, which, which is a higher order um, a kind, which takes hash of type, which means row of types. Rows in, 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 in PureScript are associations from labels, which are type level strings to types. Uh, so, for example, you can have a record with integer, with label A and B as a string, and you just uh, type it uh, like that. And we have a really nice syntax uh, where you actually don't need to write the re record thing all, all the time. You just use very similar syntax uh, where I used it here for the B. So uh, the really nice thing here is that uh, the, uh, the kind of, 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 this, uh, of this record is a type, but the kind of this uh, row, where, where rows are denoted with, with brackets, with curly brackets is hashed of type. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about them. Um, uh, also, records are extensible. You can, you can define a record that has fields A and B and any other fields. And you can use that in, in, in polymorphic functions where, where you want to define a function that just operates on, on a given label and you don't assume that uh, what is, what's else in the product type. Um, uh, yeah, and that's, that's what is row polymorphism about. So you can have an add function that adds something to, to, to a label that is an integer, and you say that r is the rest that can come. Uh, so rows are association lists from labels to types, they can have, uh, you can have duplicate labels uh, and unification for rows ignore, ignores order of different labels but preserve order of duplicates. The, this, those duplicates doesn't really matter for, for types uh, where, where you, for values, but they, but, but they matter for other things where uh, rows are used, which, which I'll show you on the next slide. And row of k is always a new kind for every, every kind. So you can have rows of various kinds, not only types. And because uh, PureScript has a really nice FFI to, to JavaScript, uh, so foreign function interface, through which you can define your own foreign data types, and you can also define your own kinds. So this, this comes really, really handy. 
the other part uh, is uh, is raw polymorphism on extensible or extensible effects. So in in Haskell, there is IO monad, and uh, you don't really track with the IO monad what kind of effects you you have in this IO monad. It, it's just in in TrueScript we uh, we have a monad which call, which which plays very similar uh, role. It's called F for effects, but it's um, uh, its signature that takes uh, a row of 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 types of actually not types, actually of effects. Those console, HTTP, FS, all have kind effect. And, and you can track uh, what kind of effects your application is using. This is actually from a, uh, from a uh, example from a real application from a, ser a server that's uh, so it's speaking with, you can see that it's FS, so it speaks to the file system, it's using HTTPS console for logging and some, some other stuff. Um, it's it's really nice thing to, to track the effects and know what kind of things you're using. Sometimes it's, uh, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get those right, to get the uh, type checker happy, because... It's, it is inferred, uh, so, so normally you, you just uh, uh, infer them and on the uh, top level or, or your model, you just uh, ask the compiler what, what's the effect and you copy paste. But sometimes if you define it somewhere, you, you have to propagate the labels and, and have it. Um, another thing that is really nice about PureScript is that we have a really nice tooling, much better than Haskell does, actually, for uh, for like really nice plugins for Vim uh, and support by the compiler. Uh, actually, from inside compiler, you can get information about completion types, uh, type holes. Actually, I think that get into Haskell recently because of PureScript got it. Uh, yeah. So, um, so that's this bit. Then we have uh, ranked n types. So, uh, first of all, in PureScript, we we have to always say for all. For all is uh, explicit, not like in Haskell, where it's implicit. And ranked n types means that you can use for all in in uh, not just in the leftmost. Uh, uh, place, but inside uh, functions like here is a is 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 a simple definition actually taken from library with exist. Exist is a, uh, a type that takes a function from uh, uh, on a type level from type to type and construct a type. And if if you want to create um, a value, you, you need to take f of a. And, and run through this. Uh, yeah, we have unsafe queries, which is just a function defined through f of i. Uh, so it's an identity function, and you define it by saying that its type is for every a and b, it's a function from a to b. And the co compiler will be happy with this cheating. It's used in this way usually to define some kind of um, foreign. Uh, data constructors or, uh, yeah. Yeah, and in this run exist, you can, you, can, you can actually use for all inside to get, uh, to get a value outside of exist. Um, and this is actually a much nicer way of working with, uh, with exist than Haskell has. Uh, well, at least for me. Um, yeah, then we have multi-parameter type classes, uh, uh, something, uh, something really nice. We have type classes, which the type classes are very similar to how, how they work in, in, in uh, Haskell. So you've got, you'll be all familiar with, with it, I guess. But the double arrow is in the opposite direction? Yes, exactly. Uh, because 
it's it's the right direction because the moment it's the implication direction. It's it's more in the mathematical sense that if you have a monad state, it's it is a monad. Uh, so it's yeah, that's a good point. Uh, then the really nice thing that that we have is uh, functional dependencies, um, which. Uh, which help to say that if, if you have a type class, you can say that whenever you know one type, the other is, uh, has to be, uh, can be inferred or can be uh, uh, found by the compiler. Uh, this row to list um, class is, is actually kind of, kind of new in the compiler, just like for two or three weeks, I guess. And, and this is actually a very nice addition to the language that you can take a row uh, of, of types. Oh, that was a good, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can, you can construct a type level list of which represent that row. And then you can come, come back with, 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 with another class. And this lets you actually do nice things with, uh, with, with records because you can uh, go over that type level list, go over the labels and types and do something. Like you can, uh, for a, any kind of record, you can get, for example, list of keys that it has, or you can define applicative instance for every, every record, something that wasn't easy for uh, before, um, yeah, and the, uh, here is a very simple example uh, with um, uh, piano numbers. So we have Z as zero and S of N as the uh, the Saxon, the next element, and then a, a simple class that if you have uh, a, re a relation between uh, to find the the next element. So if you know n and m, then you sh uh, from knowing m, you should, you should actually know what is the next one, what is, what is the type of the next one. That's, that's how the um, functional dependencies are useful. And uh, so uh, what's n there? Uh, these are types. Yeah, but I understand there is the n, which is the number, so how many numbers are there, or the rest, but what is the n there? What type does it represent? Uh, here, there's no constraint. You just, you will define it in, 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 in the instance. Uh, so, for example, here, there's one instance that says uh, that if you have uh, x and s of x, then this is this relation uh, which is defined by this type class. And if you know x, then you know actually what is the type of the next one because it's s, s of x. Um, and similar with, with, with predicate. So uh, it's just a uh, switch flip. <laughs> and the other class is, uh, so I was looking actually uh, um, it has two instances. One is, uh, uh, so it, I wanted to have a relation which is greater, not greater equal, but greater. And uh, a way I found to define it is just go back as far as you can with, with predicate. So if you know that uh, the predicate of uh, predecessor, sorry, of x is xp and uh, predecessor of y is yp, and if they're in relation, oh, it, there shouldn't be eek here. It should be just gt. Then, uh, then they are, uh, then x is greater than y. And you can go, the, the compiler will, will, will go and uh, resolve uh, as many steps as, as needed. And you have the final instance if you reach this uh, z. At some point, at the at the at the right, then you should get 
uh, this instance. And this uh, this will work in this way. So if if you uh, first of all, we have also like uh, uh, like uh, in Haskell, you there's GHCI, we have PSCI, which is the inter interactive uh, console where you can type stuff. Uh, um, yeah, and if you take greater, if two is greater of one, uh, the, the comp compiler will, will infer it and you, you will get that true. But if you try, uh, if two is greater of two, you will, you will get a type error actually by getting that uh, in possibly infinite error. Um, there are some really nice examples with uh, what you can do on, on the type level. Uh, uh, we have a standard model for, for doing stuff uh, with, with rows, symbols, which are type level strings uh, with type level booleans. We also have a, a model for type level list and maps and type level lambda calculus. Uh, so the, the type system is, is, uh, is really rich. Though there are things uh, still uh, under development like uh, instance chains, uh, hopefully we'll get them at some point or uh, type families, we don't, we don't have those yet. And it would be really nice to get them. Okay, so that was probably a very quick uh, uh, introduction what what PureScript about at the type level. Now we'll do something with, uh, with the PureScript itself. So first I will just make some uh, uh, re review of some standard stuff. Uh, so First, start, let's start with the free monad. This is, this is the naive implementation uh, because PureScript is uh, uh, compiled to JavaScript, which, which isn't very performant. And uh, uh, the, implement, the, the true implementation uh, for free monad in PureScript is actually follows uh, quite a new research paper, like two or three years old. Um, and it's much more effi efficient than than this one. Um, so, so free. Uh, if if you take a functor f, for example, and a value a, then then you have two constructors. One is to construct a value, and the other is to construct the tree that you want to construct with the functor f, and the rest. The way you can one can think about it is that you have actually a tree that is spun by the functor f. If f is the identity functor, that would be just a chain of, of f's with the value somewhere. If f is just a binary functor that takes a, a, a tuple of, of values, uh, then it would be a binary tree with, with, with the values at the bottom. And it's, it's clearly a functor and in, in PureScript, you can actually derive uh, functor in instances, so uh, um, that's that's really nice. Uh, the bind of free is is the kind of obvious one. Uh, um, if if you know that actually uh, monads are uh, come from category theory, where where you have this kind of composition from m of m to m which would mean here from a tree of trees. So in every, in every leaf you have a tree, then this bind is just stacking together the leaves and, and getting, getting a, just a large tree from, from tree of trees. Uh, yeah, so, so, so this is the free monad and this, and, uh, it's free in the sense that um, actually for any for any functor f you get a you get a monad and um, whenever you have a um, 
natural transformation from from F to any other monad, it will uh, uniquely uh, determine uh, a map map of uh, a natural transformation of of monads from free to the monad M, and and this is a bijection actually. So for any monad morphism from free to M, it, it is defined by a natural transformation of functors from F to, to, the, to a functor. Do you mean um, that we can transform the free monad into any other monad and we are with that? Uh, you can transform any functor into a monad using free. And, and this is the, uh, mm, the universal construction for, for that. Um, and in category theory, there are all, always the, the, the dual structures. You, you have monads, you have commonads, where you just inverse or the arrows, and things start to look weird. Uh, um, so uh, commonads, uh, how they differ, differ from monads? In monads, monads always uh, encapsulate a value. So they, they have something that leaves or, or some, something like that. While commonads are something that generate values. Uh, and they, they, as you will see, they, they quite often are actually infinite data structures. And the, the interface uh, uh, that is given in Haskell is, uh, or in PureScript is that you have extract method that lets you extract a single value uh, from, a, from a monad and, and another one is uh, uh, extend so if you have a if you can define a, if you can if you have a map from w of a to b then you can uh, you can uh, uh, hmm. I, where I have it? No, I, I didn't put it here. I put it the duplicate here, so that you have from W of A to W of W of A. Um, where is the ex, extend? Oh, no. So, but the extend gives you uh, um, a morphism that if you have a morphism from W of A to B, you, you can actually extend your, your, your commonad from W of A's to W of B's. And I have a very simple example for, for that. Uh, it's, it's a really basic example for commonads, and probably you all know, know it, is uh, we're using streams. And um, so a, a stream can be, uh, um, can be thought of as, as just a list of, of values, but a lazy one that you, you take uh, uh, take elements, and you have cons of uh, the the data construction would be something like cons of a with uh, lazy the rest. So that's the lazy part is is actually the difference uh, from PureScript and Haskell. That Haskell is lazy, PureScript isn't. PureScript is strict, which is actually a nice um, is it's nice choice if you if you if you if you're doing any kind of web thing. So you, you're compiling to JavaScript, which isn't lazy. Uh, and that is nice because you don't need to have any kind of uh, environment on, on your, in your application that actually needs to execute your poor script code. Uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, Coming back to, to the stream, so you have you have values and the uh, rest that coming in a lazy way, and uh, uh, extend uh, extend here is is, is re recursive. If you just extend the value, uh, you take f of s, uh, and then you extend the rest in a re recursive way. 
uh, and ex extraction is just taking the first element. And then, uh, let's say you would like to uh, smooth the stream. If you have a, uh, some kind of uh, stream from audio stream or something like that, and you, you would like to take a bunch of values, like first end values, and, and, uh, and take average of them or do something with them, and then get another stream that just uh, have this uh, moving frame, frame of n values and, and uh, averaging them, then this actually interface, uh, commonadic interface is very nice for using that. You just take a function that takes uh, uh, this average of n is a function that takes an integer which will define how, how big the frame is. So n is the integer. And oops, and the stream of numbers, and you just uh, take an average of this of first n elements in that stream. So you just pull the first n elements from the stream, and you take an average. So this gives you the function from the st stream of numbers to a number, and then you can just use extend to get a stream of of averages. Um, so are these streams, they look like they're pull based, right? They're not push based, they're not push from Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Um, and uh, you can have coffee common ads, so uh, as you expect, you have three monads, and there's a coffee common ad. And, and the coffee is actually, the previous example was a coffee commonad for, the, uh, for a given functor. Uh, and the coffee is just actually a tree, which is kind of labeled tree, which is labeled by values at every, at every node with coffee of A, and then you have the rest. So it's, it's, it's um, you can actually see that's kind of, well, it's dual to the free construction where you have had a product, uh, you had a sum, pure and free, and here you have a product of A and the rest. Um, yeah, then, then these are a bunch of useful functions to, to, uh, to construct a coffee from, from the tail and the value, you just stack, stack them together. Uh, mm. So is the sad face operator used? Mm -hmm. It looks like a sad face operator. Mm -hmm. oh, or, or the one with moustache. If uh, in, in some libraries I wrote using coffee common, I, I use it quite often. So yeah, but I haven't said it about the sad face rather. <laughs> um, The, the functor instance is, is, is also uh, uh, really simple. It's, it's, it's recursive. You just uh, map over those values and then go inside the, the lazy and coffee and map there. Uh, the ex extraction is taking the head and the uh, extending is, is just looping over, over the structure. Uh, yeah. If you have any questions, uh, just ask. Um, okay, there's time for a live demo. Uh, let's see if I can click that. So we have, uh, this is um, uh, an application that can, uh, where you can actually type your PureScript code and, and get get results. Uh, it's called try.purescript.org. Uh, and I put a very simple example of, uh, of an interpreter, which is built using coffee uh, commonad with, with a uh, 
where you interpret uh, a free monad. So you have a, a free monad as your DSL and a co-free co-monad as, as your interpreter. So uh, there will be uh, two of those. One, one will be, oops, one, one will be uh, additive, the other will be multiplicative, and they will be very similar. So we'll just go through the first one. So the, the, the state is just a count. It's a count of integers. Uh, you, can, you can derive the new, new, new type instance for it, which gives you some nice uh, um, interface for going over and under uh, the new type. Uh, I defined the show instance so we actually can show some values on the, on the right, right hand side. And, um, and the factor that will define the, the, the free monad is, is very simple. It just uh, has a single constructor. Uh, it's called add. It takes an integer and, and the rest, which is, uh, which is the functorial part. Uh, then I define uh, like a helper function, which uh, lets you define a, a, um, a command in, in, in this language. It, it takes integers and outputs a free, uh, um, free, free monad, where, where lift f just, it does the obvious thing. It just lifts, uh, as in Haskell, it just lifts a, a functor value in onto the free, uh, free monad. And then uh, the interpreter uh, um, will be uh, just a record uh, of, um, and it will, be, it will have just a single la label add, which will uh, add an, an, an integer. Uh, and first, first step of, of, of building an, an interpreter this way is, uh, is, is to have a way of, of building the coffee uh, commonad. Uh, and in, in library, there is, uh, there is a function which is called unfold coffee, uh, which I can actually show you. Uh, but yeah, so um, unfold coffee is is a is a, is a function that unfolds a coffee, uh, basically. Uh, well, that's that's the language, which which uh, in English is quite meaningful. Uh, well, we can actually ignore the first function from S to A, just take identity as, a, as an example. And then the rest is just, if you know how to construct from a, from a given value A, uh, F of A, so the rest, if you have a value and you can construct the rest, then you can actually, from, from this data, you can unfold the whole coffee because uh, at the beginning, you just take the, 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 the given value, which is E of S, which is the, the initial value. And then you, and then you just uh, go over, uh, you construct the, uh, from this value, initial value, you construct the F of, uh, F of A, and then you uh, just go inside with, with unfold coffee. Uh, with a functor instance on F, and you, you get the rest as a coffee. Uh, and differ goes from A to A is A. Again. Differ. Uh, yes, yes, and and it's just a thunk. So we just construct a function which with no arguments and with just a result. It's, it's the way you you did lazy stuff 
in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So there is no mm, kind of native support for laziness in PureScript, it's, it's a function. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, let's, let's go back. So, um, so I was here with, with unfolding, unfolding the state. So we, we, we have the initial value of state as an argument. We get it here as an argument. Uh, no, I think I will just, do we have some kind of, or my finger? Uh -huh. oh. Okay, so we have the initial state and we can just go with the next, next function and, and uh, if we take a state, we just construct the, the, the next value of run command A uh, and it's just a function that adds the given value X, which is given here to the state. Uh, so this, this syntax for updating uh, um, uh, r records is probably very familiar to you because uh, it's very similar ha as in Haskell. Um, yeah, and, and then if you want to actually get an interpreter, you need to pair the, 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 the free uh, the free monad and the co-free comonad. So you, you do that by pairing the, the functors. And if you define a function, which is called here pair A, from command A from X to Y, which uh, run command A X to get Ys, uh, simply by saying that if you have a, here we have just one command. So uh, if you take out of X F, where f represent the rest, and if you have uh, the interpreter, the, the in interpreting uh, functor with its record i, then you just uh, use add x to add x to the state, and you just map over over it uh, using f. Um, and, and then you can get, actually for free, the, uh, uh, a function from, uh, from the free monad uh, uh, spanned by, by the command A uh, functor. Uh, you take a state and, and you get a state. And that's, uh, that's given with, with the explore function. And I have to go back to, say, to, uh, to actually show you what the explore does. Um, and explore is here. Um, it's probably easier to understand it with, with, a, with a cup of tea and 15, 15 minutes, uh, but I'll, I'll try to do my best. Um, so let's say that you have a uh, you have this pairing function here, uh, so uh, which, which has the same um, type as the one on on the previous uh, tab. Uh, so you, it takes x y and you have f of uh, a map from x to y and it takes g of x and then you can produce, produce y's. Uh, so you have this kind of pairing between f, of g, f and g. And if you take a free monad of f with, with values uh, as functions from a to b and a co-free uh, comonad uh, spanned by, by, by the functor g, then you can actually interpret those three uh, monads and get a value out of it. And uh, it's, um, it's simply running a state. If you, if you, you have a coffee, which is a tree with, with kind of values that you, you, you'll get on the way, 
going, uh, going through the free monad. And if you're going through, uh, uh, through branching parts of the free monad, you, you will always uh, update the state re recording to the uh, uh, functor that is, that is the, the monad is defined with. Here we, we have only, in the monad I was using, we only had add, so it was just a stream of adds. Uh, um, and on, on the way, when you're going through the free monad, you, you just update the state of, on, on coffee of the, of, the, of the labels. Uh, um, and, you, and you just do that on using a state monad to track the changes. You can, you can also, which is, which is really nice, you can actually have a monadic version of, of Explore. Uh, where, where you pair not, not just F and G and get Ys, but you can pair F and G and get some kind of monadic values, like M of, M of Y. If, if you have such pairing, then you can also, also build a pairing between free and coffee and, and get M of B, which is, which is very useful for any kind of asynchronous interpreters. Um, okay, so... So this is how you, you, can, you can obtain uh, a function that, that interprets uh, this free uh, monad over over this, the 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 state of i. Um, it it is actually quite useful sometimes to have uh, the coffee uh, inter interpreter. Um, for example, you you can by by hoisting uh, the. Um, the the coffee uh, st structure you can you can add behaviors to the interpreter uh, and you can do a bunch of other stuff uh, that is that is really useful uh, sometimes it's uh, um, it's easier to work actually outside of coffee uh, where you want to access the values that are produced. Uh, um, basically here you have to always well with this approach you have to always use uh, this monad free monad with, with the values which are functions at the end so you don't after running a, a command you, you don't get an output you get a function uh, so sometimes uh, you might want to have a different interpreter the, does a lot of different things. Um, okay, and and then I have a really the same thing, just with uh, with another counter, which is multiplicative counter. Uh, it has one command which is called multiply, uh, which will multiply the count by by a given number, uh, and is built in in exactly the same way. Uh, yeah, it has command M, which is the multiply, then is the run command M at the functor, which actually spans the coffee uh, commonad, and, uh, and the interpreter, which is pulled in the same way with unfolding. Uh, uh, the coffee, the next function is, is really ana analogous here, uh, uh, using the pa pairing. And so uh, no, now is the thing that you have, uh, you can have various uh, interpreters and various um, free monads that you would like to combine together uh, and have a, a 
co-product of, of the, of the uh, commands that you run. So you can multiply or you can add. And the pro product of the state that you track both changes of, of one counter and the other. And kind of product of the interpreters that let you do that. And here just are some type aliases that I will, I'll, I will use. So the com composed command is just a co-product of command A and command M, where, where co-product co is the functorial co-product. It takes uh, two functors and, and gives a functor. So uh, um, co-product of command A and command M on, on a given value will, will be just command A of A or command M of A. Uh, the composed state is, is, is tuple. Uh, we actually don't have uh, tuples like in Haskell. Uh, there we, uh, we have actually records for, for, for tuples which are kind of named. Uh, and the... Uh, mm, and then we have a, a composed DSL, which is the free monad spun by the coproduct, uh, uh, with values from composed state to com functions from composed state to composed state, and and the the, the run command that we'll, we'll be using is a pro is a, just a product. And the problem is now how to compose the interpreters to get to get the things uh, working and. I actually found a really short function that let, lets you do that. If, uh, if you take, uh, it's just, it just this compose function. If you take two functors, f and g, and you have two coffee structures, coffee commonads on f and of g, then you can actually produce a coffee from, uh, of product of them, which acts on the tuple. Uh, and it just acts as, as you'd expect if, if uh, uh, it, if you take uh, the initial value of this coffee is just a tuple of, of heads of, of those co uh, of those coffees. So you have two of them and you can take heads and just take a tuple. And then uh, there's a way to, pro to produce the rest. The really tricky part here is that um, here in the in this product flip uh, uh, and you see tuple G, it it actually moves only one leg uh, and keeps one leg the old one. So uh, if you analyze this, you'll see that you can get weird behavior if your interpreter will will not use them correctly because one, one, one leg in the, in the tuple coffee will be the previous one, not the cu current one. Uh, but then still you, you can build the interpreter in, in really the same way, use a, use a co-product pa pairing between them. And, uh, and if the pairing is really the one that you should, you should define with co correctly marrying the left with the right, you, you, you'll get an interpreter that will uh, work well and we can actually try to compute something. Um, so this is, this is the example which here runs on the uh, right hand side. You, we have a state A which is uh, the additive counters that starts at zero, the, the multiplicative one starts at one and uh, And then the program I'm, I'm constructing is just uh, adding, adding one and multiplying by two. And we actually get the right result. If you, you get one on the, on the additive part and you get two on the, on the multiplica, multiplicative part. And we can, uh, I can show that is, uh, we can do something also. Mm. 
by three. Yeah, now we get six. So it's times two, times three, it's six. Um, yeah, that's um, um, that's one thing. Also, you can you can do some other stuff with it. I will just. Uh, with, with a very similar compose, um, maybe a, a bit more complicated, you can actually compose uh, streams. So here uh, I have a, a, a data which is um, uh, which actually will will define a finite stream. So I need to end it, um, um, and I'm producing Fibonacci numbers uh, he, here. Where is this fib, fib stream here? It just produces uh, first, uh, I don't know how many. Uh, actually, no, because it, it says um, unless the value is, is greater than 1,000. So a first bunch of Fibonacci numbers, and then, and then the composed stream just the, uh, I compose to the same streams, so I get just tuples of, of the same numbers. But you could compose two different streams and get uh, get a zip of two streams, kind of. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty all I have. So how complex are these all aspects? So because in, in Haskell, I guess it's universal. There's this church of embedding, and it takes the same again, and complexity. How is there something better in JavaScript? Is it maybe slower? Do you know? Well, JavaScript is slower, so it is slower. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, 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 I, do, I don't know actually how. Uh, I haven't dived enough into inter inter implementation of the uh, free uh, free monad, but it's not the obvious one. Uh, so it's much more efficient uh, in certain cases because it it all depends uh, how you use the monad. Actually, um, yeah. Could you perhaps show us the generated JavaScript for the last example? Uh, yes, I could. Actually, uh, this is nice thing about PureScript that it generates actually re readable JavaScript code. Well, uh, you have to get used to that, but you don't need to. You don't actually need to read it that often. Uh, it's. It happened to me that I had to debug. Uh, the JavaScript code, but it happened like three times in. Uh... Actually, I'm more interested in the size, because, for example, the size of JavaScript from GHCJS uh, is, is, is terrible. It's, it's, it's very huge. Uh, it's it's good. The the size is really good. Um, you say there's um, no runtime. There's there's no runtime, uh, so you don't have a problem with that and. Um, yeah, it's it's okay for for doing web development with like uh, building a React application in in PureScript is is pretty okay, and we have really decent uh, uh, dead code elimination as well. So, uh, so it's like ten screens, right? Right, right. Um, I mean, it's not entirely yes. true that there is no runtime. Uh, like, for instance, as far as I understand, it also generates uh, universal like generic functions for all, all the carriage functions, right? So if you for, if you want to do any, at least that's what it did a year ago when I looked into it. It 
it generated like carry two, which was a function that returned a function, and carry three, which was a function that returned a function that returned a function, and so on and so forth. Um, I think it doesn't anymore. No. I, I think. Um, at least I haven't seen it. So, yeah, I mean, this pattern here is a bit of a performance overhead. Uh, oh, it, it, it is, it is, indeed. You can go over, over that uh, and, and define your functions in an uncarried way, but using uncarried function in a functional language is like, um, yeah. Yeah, but in general, it's not a problem that they can solve, right? So it might be solved by you. Yes, 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 and yeah, and there are attempts to do that. Uh, so, uh, if you pass this, this JavaScript to a closure compiler, uh, does it get smaller, faster, or slower, or larger? Um, I haven't run it uh, by myself uh, on closure compiler, but I know it. Uh, um, no, I don't know actually somebody who did it. Uh, but um, it should get smaller. I, I, yeah, it's just normal JavaScript code, just uncarried. So, so I did that. And it depends yeah. what, you, what you want. It wants to match up a dead code denomination because there's hardly any dead code in the yeah. output. But it will minify it, so it will compress the layers okay. to one character. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it will still look but, the size of half. But yeah. PureScript has that code elimination in its compiler, yes. and it will get a better better version actually at some point, uh, which will run over. Uh, because now it runs over the JavaScript uh, syntax tree, while it could actually run over the uh, the PureScript syntax tree. And it should get much better, also. But it's it's good enough to actually work on front-end application. Is the compiler fast? Uh, the compiler is uh, has a good uh, good support for big projects. Um, it has um, there is a, a server that actually ca caches your your boots. Uh, and it just needs to compile the parts that you're changing. So it's, it's, then it's really fast. And I know really big people working on really big projects which, which have megabytes of, of code. And uh, it's possible uh, to do that with this kind of support. Um, or is it at all? It's, it's, um, first of all, it's very easy to, to, to write your, your own FFI bindings for, for any kind of thing you, you're doing. Uh, sometimes it might be a bit tricky to get it uh, uh, in a type safe way. For example, re recently I found a way to get React bindings so that the refs uh, if you know React, there are refs, and, and you can attach things to the, this uh, thing. Sometimes you actually need that in, in, in pure script. And I found a way using index uh, monads to have it type checked by the type checker, so you're, you're not escaping any, anything. Uh, yeah. Have you tried Halogen maybe? Uh, I tried briefly. Uh, I haven't used it much, but I know big projects that are uh, doing halogen and are, are doing great, and some really decent people are working with it, so it's it's really great project. It has its own um, uh, virtual DOM, for example, so actually PureScript is fast enough to have virtual DOM implementation in PureScript. Um, yeah, that's about speed that it's good enough. I'm not thinking. Uh, in, I think some of the blow up of the, of the JavaScript code size in GFCJS comes from the fact that it's, uh, uh, it goes to the normal Haskell pipeline of uh, 
translating Haskell to the core, the, the intermediate language, when it gets much uh, bigger, and then the core is transformed, and then normally in Haskell with native binaries, it's getting again uh, small because it's, it's translated to machine code, but uh, with GACJS it's translated to JavaScript, which, which, is, which, is, yeah. which is big. And uh, so I wonder uh, how many optimizations that does the pure compiler, uh, pure script compiler uh, do, and on which internal representation does it work when optimizing, when yeah, transforming and optimizing? Um, so the focus right now is not the, on the optimizations right now. It's getting the version 1.0. One, one oh, uh, uh, um, yeah, but. There are many optimizations that are quite actually possible to do that, and yeah, on, on the on the level. On the level of, of the pure script syntax, on the level of JavaScript, yes, or yes. We tend to have some in, some intermediate representation, but there's a problem with that because it usually, it, especially if it's yeah, the issue yeah. yeah. one, it usually blows up the code size. Um, yeah, the the sugar one is bigger, and uh, but then you have more information there. Yeah. Uh, and it's the, the functional one, not the JavaScript. It isn't, and and also doing it on on the on the current implementation is 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 good for other uh, other languages because uh, right now we have C plus uh, plus backend for for pure script. There's work on Haskell, uh, and probably some other that I don't remember, but. It's not only JavaScript that will be uh, will be the backend. Uh, how much uh, lack of test code is um, So ac actually, actually, in the recent spec for the web, uh, uh, tile call will be will be in the browsers. Uh, I I think in Chrome you can actually enable uh, enable it if 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 you if you go to the uh, Chrome flags, probably also in Firefox, uh, you might get uh, stack errors in in pure script, but there are libraries to go over that, and and have really long uh, computations, monadic computations. Uh, yeah. yeah.